Hi everybody and welcome to stampityourself.com. My name is Connie and today's project is Nobody Hugs Like a Mother. And this is the project that we're doing today. It's a card. It's making a flower. It's using label. Um, we're using the tags and labels framelits, some diamantes, um, some brads and some of this gorgeous lace. Um, but I will give you all the instructions on my blog, which is stampityourself.com, on how to go about making this and the products you need to buy or the products you may already have on hand to do this project. And we will take it from there, shall we? Let's go. So first off, you're going to need a piece of cardstock. Now, I've used black, and that's always hard to see on film because I have got a black silicon mat here. So you won't be able to see it, but it is a black cardstock. Uh, let me see if I can, for the purposes of this demonstration. <laughs> there we go. Maybe I should use the white. Would that be easier? Maybe I'll use the vanilla. Um, yes, all right. We'll try that, shall we? That might be nicer on the eye, even though it works better for me the other way. Okay, so we've got an A, uh, sorry, we have got an 11 landscape in length, and we have got a four and a quarter in width and scored at five and a half to make our card and our card will stand up this way let me just um try and step back a bit there we go all right so that's going to be the base of the card you need a card mat which we are going to be using and that is this side the mat is five and a quarter by four so the length is five and a quarter and the width is four just had to check that then before I told you that. Okay, we're also going to be using the other side of this card to do our labels, which are these ones here. So fear not, you will not waste your paper. And it is such beautiful paper and it's so hard to um, waste it, I must admit. It's like, ooh, can't do that. We're also going to be making a flower. Okay, so the products that we're using today, and I'll quickly go through those with you so that you know what you need to get. Um, a lot of it you probably already have on hand and if you don't well then just go and get it you can shop online 24 7 you don't have to join you don't have to do anything you just go online purchase pay the postage with your credit card check out job done so don't have any concerns about that okay um my screen's looking a little bit hazy so i'm hoping that oh no we're back in screen all right you need to get punches um the punches that i have used to make the flower and this is the flower that we'll be making today is the two and three eighths scallop punch and the one and three quarter inch scallop punch and we have used those punches to make the flower as i've said you need to get the Timeless Elegance Designer Series paper. That is silent pause. Okay. Let me see. Um, da, 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 da. Yes, that's right. Okay, that is the one that's got this. Mm, it's got a lovely little plasticky look, hasn't it? Ooh, dear. Okay, it's got this gorgeous designer series paper. It's the one that's in the occasions catalogue, I think. Uh, I'm not sure, but I will check that before I actually um, put it online. But it's the one with all these gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous papers. I oh, love them. And the other, um, either way, this I'll tell you. This is the time lens sorry the time timeless elegance designer series paper and the item number is one three eight four double four how's that good huh okay and the other paper that i've used is this typeset specialty designer series paper and that is item number one three three seven zero four and we're using the piece that looks like this out of this out of the design this is gorgeous this is kind of like obviously it's double sided and it has this gorgeous worldy map on it on the on one side and it's got this gorgeous pattern that i've used for the flower on the other side and it's really fine it's like usually the other designer series paper is really quite sturdy in terms of grant um, gsm i'm not quite sure what this gsm is on this one but it is quite nice and it makes a flower um really well and it's this gorgeous picture and i can see other designs in this too so i can see me coming up with something else on this so who knows 
All right, so you'll need those two types of papers. Okay. I'll just bring my stuff back over. Okay, what else will we need? Now, the other thing that you I am going to be using is going to be the um, black cardstock. Oh, tags and labels, framelit dies. These ones. I do not know how I have not had these previously. I don't know how long they've been out for. I can't even tell you where I got them from, which magazine or which, whether it was the annual catalogue or the occasions catalogue. I'm not quite sure. But either way, I don't know how I didn't have these. These are great. Framelit dies. Uh, this is item number 138282. I'm using the largest little framelit here. Oh, might just hit my light. This one here is going to be making the larger of the two here it's a bit tricky on the eye and I'll show you how you did that it's really easy and I've used these framelits to do it so but it just goes to show you I know the punches are fantastic when you want to punch something out but these are great too all right so I've used the largest of that and then I've used the second I think it's sort of like that's the smallest one then there's this size after it then there's the largest one that I've taken out because this one is bigger than that one so, yeah, so that's the largest one I've used. So if it's one, two, that's the third one I'm using, three, four, five, and I'm using the fifth, fifth smallest one. And that's going to be to do this tiny label here. So it's the two. And you'll see that um, I've popped it up on dimensions. So you'll be able to see how it's done, but it's quite handy. And these are great. I can't believe I haven't got these first time. I only got these this week. Very excited about them. Because they, um, oh, I'm gobsmacked that I didn't have them earlier. Okay. So we are going to use the frame that's dies. Okay. We're going to be using the Bear Hugs sentiment from the Bear Hugs stamp set. And I'm going to be using Nobody Hugs Like a Mother. And you probably won't be able to see that. But I'm bringing it in anyway. There you go. Nobody Hugs Like a Mother. Ooh. Nobody Hugs Like a Mother. And we're using that one. And it's a really tiny sentiment. And it goes really well onto the little framelit style there. Beautifully. It's nice to be able to get a sentiment. And they're really nice tiny sizes and they'll fit in the frames that we're using so that's really good so we're going to be using that stamp set for our sentiment we're going to be using some antique brads um i'll put the number of the item on our um on the blog on my blog stamp um these antique brads are really oh, i love these look i've never used them all I'm going to have to get some more because they're awesome as well. And I've used, um, look, you can use any one that you see fit um, for your particular card. But I've used Antique Brads on for this particular occasion for that thing. Uh, lace Trim. I am using the Lace Trim, which is the Sahara Sand. And that is item number 137866. I actually wrote that down. Um, that's Sahara Sand. We're using some of that. Not much. Very sparingly, because <laughs> it is gorgeous. And what else? Oh, and some Diamantes to um, just make it a little bit blingy just down here. So with all that being said, let's get to it and put the card together. I need to show you how to make the flower, so I'm going to do that first. There are quite a few versions um, online where you can make flowers. If you look on YouTube or whatever, it's entirely optional how you make your flower and also how you put it together and what you use to put it together with i have used as i said the um, designer series paper for mine and i particularly used as i said this one here and basically what you need to do is you use your large punch and you punch out three of these so you're going to do three sizes so we're punching out three of those don't worry too much on this occasion but basically I punched out three of those and two of the smaller punches that I did mention, which is the one and three quarters and the two and three eighths scallop punch. And you do two of the smaller ones out of this designer series paper. I've already gone ahead and done it. Done it. Is that right? It doesn't sound right, does it? I've already gone ahead and punched 
<laughs> I have already gone ahead and punched out the um, the flower ahead and I've already put it together because I want to show you how it's done in this particular instance and as I said that it is available online you can do it it's not hard um, there's quite a few versions running around what I have done though is I have in my wisdom gone and punched out okay I punched out in white cardstock um, the same amount that I would use. Oh, I've got one missing. I've flinged it somewhere. Okay, that's, so that's the little ones. So you need two of the little ones and three of the big ones. And what I've gone ahead and, and done is I have started doing the flower. And I've done it like this deliberately to show you. Uh, this is cardstock. This will bend differently. It's got a different fibres in it. It's a little bit stronger than designer series paper. So it can mesh quite well. So what you do is you just use something little to, you know, in there to make it. But we're not up to that yet. I'll show you how I got to that point first. So to save confusing you. So what you have to do is you, you've you punched out three of these. So the three of these, you're going to go along on every second scallop. You're just going to cut inwards. Just like that. As I said, there is plenty online of how to make little flowers, plenty of options. Do them in whatever um, paper you like. Do them in design series paper, do them in cardstock, coloured cardstock, whatever it is that you like. So go around and just do two little scallops on each corner. So you take those two and you do a notch. So you're making your little love hearts, but you're not cutting out the little love hearts per se. Okay? So you do that on all of your cardstock or your flower per se on the small ones and the large ones so we just go around and we do that quite easy cut in far enough for it to actually become a little heart and then what you're going to do is you're going to take either a pen pencil something small whatever it is that's going to work for you the reason that I didn't do it on this um, designer series paper is because it is actually a little bit hard to see I can see it if I turn it over I can see where I'm cutting but it is a little bit hard to see on the camera so that's why I've done it in designer series paper but it is actually quite easy to do and after you've done a few of them too you don't even look back on it it's just like bang 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 you're done so I've done it well so don't forget to punch a hole in the middle of it that's the other important thing and I often get so carried away making the flower I forget to punch the hole so let's just punch a hole in the center there we go so we're punching a hole for a brad in whatever um, designer paper or cardstock you're using okay and then the next thing we're going to do is we're just going to get the, the little love heart one petal at a time and we're just going to twirl it around now this one I use the paintbrush end here my paintbrushes always make an appearance don't they okay so we use this end and I twirl it basically and just make it into a crumply kind of a leaf so it's kind of lots of shapes now some people will actually um, use a spritz on these as well um, just a spray of water that means so they spritz them um, put water on them you could probably put a little bit of hairspray on them if you really wanted them to stay up it depends on on um, how you feel about the cardstock maintaining its flower shape so you know you can let them dry wet them and then dry them out it's entirely up to you so basically what happens then is your flower obviously takes shape like that okay so we've got hypothetically a flower and you've got it in different sizes like that so then you're going to just squash it down and you're going to pop the bread in and doesn't that look like a nice little gardenia when you do that hmm that's an idea okay so so you know you pop your bread in and then you've got your nice little flower and it's really that easy so you do that with all three pieces that you've popped out and there's in the two smaller ones put a hole in the middle you can spritz it if you like um, this is cardstock it takes its shape a little bit easier than this um, designer series paper this is quite soft you might want to dampen this one after you've cut it and shaped it spray it let it dry and it should be nice and crisp or you can use it just the way I did I didn't wet mine I put a little bit of perfume on mine I have to say because I wanted to test it to see if the perfume would do the trick and I also thought if it's a mother's day it'd be nice just to spray your mother's per favorite perfume on the flower wouldn't that be cute and then she can smell it on her flower so yeah 
that um, I have, um, no, it still smells like beautiful. Actually, I like the smell of fresh designer series paper anyway. <laughs> oh, I love, I love designer series paper when you smell it. Okay, strange, I know, but true. Okay, so that's how you make your flower. Not hard, pretty easy. So you need to be organised and just doing it on camera is a little bit long and lengthy, so we don't want to take up your time doing that. So I have gone ahead and, and I've already done that with this particular one because, and I've done it obviously on my first sample one that I've, um, that I've made. So I've gone ahead and made that. So let's put the card together and put come up with the design. So the, the next thing that we would be doing is we would be taking our mat which is this one here and this is going on top of our oh i better bring in the white cardstock so that you can see what i'm doing i might just turn that around again there we go all right so we're taking the black cardstock and we're going to put our mat down onto this but before we do that there's two things that we're going to do the first thing we're going to do is that we're going to get our black ink and i am just going to go around the edges of this paper because I can just see little white fibre, very tiny when I cut it. That could be the blade, it could be the paper, it could be many things. But what I'm going to do is just blend that out. And that's really easily done with a little bit of black paper just around the edges. And I'm sure that everybody knows how to do that. So what that does is it just makes it blend in a little bit better. So that done. The next important thing that we're going to do is that we're going to just set aside the cardstock for a moment. We're going to take the designer series paper and we're going to flip it over. We're going to use, um, put on our lace just because that's the next step that we want to do. So we want to put the lace around. I'll just turn that around so you can see it. We want to put the lace around our card and stick it down. So I've got it already cut there. So I'm just going to lift it up. And I'm just going to use double-sided tape to hold it down. And that's all you have to do. You can leave the tape on the double-sided tape or you can take it off. It's entirely up to you how you do it. But basically that's how I put the tape on. Okay, so we're just going to pop that over with a card. So as you can see, it's sort of kind of almost coming together. All right, so we've made our flower, put our bread in, all that yada, yada, yada. Okay, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to do the label. Now, what I did with the label is I've got my largest, whoop, I've gone out of focus there. We've used the die cut machine to create the labels. So what I have done on my original is that I have made the first label with the black line being the main center of the line. So I'm making, putting my, oh, actually, you know what I need to do? I need to cut it. So what I'll do is I will grab my Big Shot and I'll show you exactly how I am going to do it. Hence, one magnetic plate. And one plate. And then we've got our card cardstock, paper, whatever it is you're cutting. Now I want to make sure that, I'll just move this up so you can see what I'm doing. Okay, so the first one that I want to cut is one where I've got the black line and I've got two cream lines. And then the second one that I'm going to cut is opposite. So I'm going to be cutting the next one up and I'm going to have a cream line as a main line and two smaller black lines. And that's exactly how I wanted to go through the big shot. So while you're sitting there looking at the camera thinking, where has she gone? I'm going to run that through the big shot right now. I'll be two seconds. You hear a crack? Which is quite normal for our big shots. Okay, here we go. So I have used the big label to cut the first one, first tag, and then the second tag, which is going to go like that. So as you can see, it creates this kind of 
double line kind of effect because it doesn't look complete unless it's all done so we'll go ahead and we'll do the label now so what we're going to do is uh, on the big one we will use dimensions and we'll use lots of dimensions to pop this up I don't I don't want he's putting the parents in then got excited okay so that's the big one and then the second one which is the smaller of the two we are going to stamp our sentiment on I've obviously done it uh, stamped it in black because it is a black dark card anyway in this, that respect so you want to be able to see the sentiment now last time I did it I didn't do it really straight so I'm going to try really hard to make sure it's straight and even nobody hugs like a mother isn't that cute okay so then we are going to use some dimensionals on the back of this one and we are going to pop this one up as well oh that diamond is back again okay so let me just bring that up on to the first label tag as i said these framelits are really good i'm liking them okay so i'll just put my framelits over there Actually, move them completely the other way okay so when you line it up, you just want to make sure the black one is in line with the white one, just to make it balanced. And it does have a really neat effect on the actual tag itself. So that being said, oh, sorry, I thought to myself, where's my card gone? Okay, um, that's now ready to put on the card. This is now ready to mount. So what we'll do is we're going to, we will pop this on some dimensionals we'll review about dimensionals everything's got dimension on it dimension dimensional right and you know what i find those little backs of the dimensionals everywhere isn't it funny like you, you craft in your room or you craft wherever you craft and then you'll find these little white backings of the dimensionals which basically are this octagon shape and you find them everywhere uh, throughout the house. You know, and I think to myself, how did they get there? <laughs> it's like they magically appear everywhere. You could use them for confetti for, for weddings. Okay. So basically you're just lining up your mat as you would normally do. Any mat surface. The next thing that we can probably put down would be our flower. So again, we've got I've got dimensionals up. And like I said before, just play around with your flower until you've got it looking as fluffy and buffy as you want it to be. And I placed my card, sorry, my flower about there with dimensionals just stuck on the back, showing beautifully like that. Okay, and then the next thing we're going to do is just pop our tag on the bottom, which we've just made up, with our tags and labels, framelits, dies. I cannot believe I didn't have them until now. Okay, but I've got them now, so I'm really happy. Okay, because I've got to say, with all the punches that we've got, we've got lots of scallops and we've got lots of rounds and we've got the washi label, the washi label one, which is good. I like that one a lot. And we've got the word window and we've got ovals. But when it comes to actual this shape, we don't have a lot of. And funny enough, I think this is my actual favourite shape. So... When I saw these, I thought, I haven't got those. Why haven't I got those? And then I realised I was really missing them and I didn't even have them. <laughs> and I don't know where, I, I can't even remember, but I will put on my blog where I got them from, whether it is in the annual catalogue or whether or not it's in the occasions catalogue. I'm pretty sure it's in the annual catalogue. Um, and, like, you've got so many different options. But I'm just so in love with them. Anyway, okay, getting back to the card at hand. All right, let's just pop this label on. In a good balancing section. There we go. That are okay. I know it's pretty hard to see, but you can see that it's coming together there. So then, the last thing we want to do is to add some diamantes just across the top. Now, these diamantes, I'm not using stamping up diamantes. 
these are just different ones because they are all in a row and they stick just so much easier than um, one at a time. So I didn't really want to sit here and just do one at a time, but I did like the whole idea of the line, the line on the top and the line on the bottom because it does look really, really, let me just see if I can bring it in for you a little bit closer. There we go. Yeah, there. So it does look really good at just being here and being a little bit closer. Um, it looks kind of, I really like the Diamantes, but I didn't want to put them on one at a time. And Stamping Up has got them where you do do them one at a time. That one's a little bit longer, so I'm just going to trim that one. I don't want it to be, everything has to be flush with me when it comes to designing cards. <laughs> it's not with everything, but it is when I'm doing my cards. Okay, so that my friends, is basically it. That's the card. The tags. I love them. Okay, so there you go. Let me just, um, yeah, I, th I, I think this turn turns out gorgeous. This card, this, um, this card, this flower is um, really, really useful. You will use this flower um, again and again, I think, um, for just about who knows but you know once you've made one you will find that you'll just whack a flower on something if you want to do a little gift box with little um thank you cards in it you can just put a flower like that on the top you can use cardstock you can use any type of paper it doesn't really matter but this flower works really well so if you've got the scallop punches in the, the scallop punches basically it'll work with it whatever paper you choose to use on it so um, yeah, I'm really glad that I have shared that with you. As I said, there is other versions available um, and there's lots of other options available too. But it's um, really nice when you can get it together in one card. So you've got one tutorial there that you can look at and think, right, I don't have to go anywhere else. Know what I want to do. That's it. It's done. So that's it from me. Thank you very much for joining me. I hope you enjoyed my waffling and my tutorial. Um, I do hope you have a great Mother's Day. And I do hope that you reproduce these cards because they, they are absolutely stunning in real life. Very pretty. And I know if I had a daughter and she gave one to me, I would really love it. Nobody hugs like a mother. Um, what else? I was just about to say something. Oh, yes. The other thing I want to say is you, I, I probably did or didn't mention it before. But on this part here, it doesn't have to be that sentiment. It can be happy birthday, wedding, whatever you want. Congratulations, a thank you card really easy so this foundation can be used again and again because you're just changing over the sentiment obviously you're going to be changing over the sentiment so don't be afraid not to reproduce this card in some fashion so um yeah thank you very much for joining me check it all out on my blog which is stampityourself.com i will have all the instructions on it with all the um item code numbers that i've forgotten or whatever it is that i have forgotten i will just make sure it's all done and happy crafting thanks for stopping by i hope you've enjoyed the tutorial and i hope to speak to you soon thanks again